good day to all of you guys. I'll make this somewhat larger. And this is for Form 3 and for CSEC, as you can see here or there. And the goal of this short video is describe the social, political, and economic patterns of the indigenous people of the Americas up to 1492. And this year, year should be relevant for you guys because it's the coming of Columbus and after him, the Spanish. This is the end goal. And one part of that is our topic of this video, chapter one, Caribbean history for CSEC. And we'll talk today about the Mayans. The Mayans had one of the great civilizations of human history. By civilization, we mean a culture or a group of people who achieved a lot of things like making huge architecture buildings, creating their own writing, creating a religious system and things like that. One of the things that the Mayans achieved was agriculture. They grew maize and all kinds of um, subspecies of maize and also had their own way of doing agriculture. They made stone buildings like this one and made especially stone temples and pyramids. And they also practiced a form of hieroglyphic writing, what is in Pavimento Hieroglyphico. So the Mayans had a great civilization. Let's talk about the history of the Mayans. The Mayan civilization. Mayan civilization yeah, had its core in the Yucatan Peninsula. What is about here? Yeah, the Yucatan Peninsula. Peninsula means in Dutch Schier Eiland, and it means like it's an island, but a small part of it is stuck to the mainland here. It's like a mine, an island, but not really. And this Yucatan Peninsula, return to another mode. This Yucatan Peninsula begins in 250 before Christ. We have the rise of Mayan culture. So we have the beginning of the growing of big cities, the building of big pyramids, the creation of an own culture, and it starts to rise. We often see in civilizations that they have a moment where they start to rise, become bigger, achieve great things, achieve their own writing, things like that. And this rise of Mayan culture lasted for more than seven centuries. So we see more building of pyramids, more creating of their own writing, creating of their own pottery, creating of their own kind of agriculture to feed all of those people in their civilization. And in this Yucatan Peninsula, they have limestone, flint, cement, and plaster, all kinds of construction um, instruments and elements that they use to build their brick cities, to build their temples, to build their pyramids and their temple complexes in Yucatan Peninsula. And one of the beautiful examples of their culture is this kind of pottery. And we call this pottery, Chicanel pottery. And this is a name that the archaeologists gave them. And this is also a way that, uh, by which archaeologists classify cultures together by dating them and looking at their ornamentation and their um, decoration and discovering that these pottery belong together. So we have the chicken help pottery. And one of the achievements of the Mayan civilizations, civilization was the chicken help pottery that they created. And how can you recognize it? It often has animal motifs like here, and it often has like groovings in it. Uh, groovings that show the animal motifs and natural motifs. Yes, the pen, no, the mouse, actually. Okay, we'll continue. 
at its height, because we said the culture grows, but each culture, each civilization has in one moment also has like a moment when it has, at it, when it is uh, on its biggest. Yeah. And at its height, the um, culture of the Mayans consisted of big cities, uh, not only in the strict Yucatan Peninsula, but also outside of it. So it had more than 40 cities and famous are, for instance, Palenque and famous are, for instance, Tikal and famous are, for instance, Chichen Itza. I don't speak Mayan, so you have to forgive me for my pronunciation. And each city had más o menos between 50,000 and 500,000 inhabitants. So starting with 50,000, some cities, but some bigger cities, as the ones I named here above, had like half a million of inhabitants. So really big cities. And most Mayans in those days, so more than 1500 years ago, lived in nowadays Guatemala. So about in this area, Atomenos, most Mayans lived. lived lived, pardon me. So in nowadays Guatemala, most Mayans lived and with nowadays we mean that it is now called Guatemala, but not back then. So nowadays is Avandia. Yeah, the most Guatemala, uh, there the most Mayans lived actually. So we have seen uh, uh, what the Mayan empire becomes at its height. But around 600, 700 AD, um, we see a sudden decline. The people vanish from their cities and these empty cities and temples we find nowadays looking like this, all grown with jungle vegetation covered up to disappear for hundreds of years. And we have some thoughts about it, how, how this came to be. One, perhaps there was an agricultural exhaustion. Second, perhaps there were droughts. Sakura, think Papi Mentu. And because of that, perhaps the people that remained and other people that lived outside of the Mayan Empire fought wars together about the remaining food and the remaining agriculture and the remaining cities. But we don't know this 100% for sure. But this is the idea that, the hypothesis, why was there a climb, más o menos 600, 700 AD? Well, there was a climate change, cambio de clima. Because of that, there were droughts, secura in papimento, and perhaps uh, agricultural exhaustion. And because of that, people didn't have any food anymore, uh, less food, less, less maize. And because of that, perhaps in, within the Mayan Empire or with people from outside the Mayan Empire, they had wars. From this, we take the next step to the time of the Spaniards. Yeah. Now, in the time of the Flan Spaniards, the cities flourished. Eating Papimento is a quita florece. Yeah. And where did they flourish? I need the map behind me for that. Yes, here's my pen. If we have the map and we look at the map, especially in the Mayan highlands over here and over here, we have that the cities flourish. But in the Mayan highlands, we see that there was decline and the cities and the temples were abandoned. So we have still a moment of decline, starting in the 6th and the 7th century AD. But in the Mayan highlands, as you can see here, there you still have the flourish, um, flourishing cities of the Mayans. It's an important word for history, geography, social studies. And it's a time when a lot of people live there and they have like a flourishing culture, their culture does well, and they do still certain achievements over there. In the 16th century, 
16th century, we start the Columbus who comes to this area, to the Caribbean, and after him, Spaniards like Pizarro and Cortes, and they start to invade Meyer empires like those of the Mayan. And the Mayans who lived at that time were villagers, so they were not part of a bigger empire anymore. They had their own crops, so they were self-sufficient. They made their own food, for instance, maize, but all kinds of other crops also. And they practiced the religion of their ancestors. So the Mayans had a certain practice in their temples and in their ancestor worship and these things the villagers that lived during the time of Columbus still had, but they were not part anymore of a grander or bigger empire. Okay. Yes. And like I said, they made their own crops, for instance, maize and all kinds of beans and chilies. Um, and they still practice this kind of agriculture in the highlands of the Mayan empire in roughly what we call now Belize and a part of Honduras. I hope you enjoyed this video about the social, political and economic practices of the indigenous people up to the Americas, uh, of the Americas up to 1492. And we talked about Chapter 1, Caribbean History for CSEC. I hope you enjoyed. If you have questions that remain, you can put them below. But you can also ask me during class or in classroom or by sending me an email. Enjoy your day.